Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor, and today we're going to be making kinetic art. It is a mobile, and it's powered by air movement. This particular mobile is placed in my garage right outside the door, and the warm air from the house moves it. It's in the style of Alexander Kohler, and as you can see, it's held together with rivets instead of using the wire like a staple like Alexander Kohler did. I'll put a link below to step-by-step -step process of making a mobile using the staple method. I use rivets. This is the staple method here. And this is just a coat hanger and cardboard. Great way to start practicing uh, on making them. Very inexpensive. I make mine out of galvanized steel and welding rod. They're really meant for being outside. They're really pretty heavy duty. Here's a glimpse around uh, my garage ceiling at some of the mobiles that I've done in the past. I actually learned from a very skilled artist, Brian Kirk, my friend, um, got me interested back in art. Um, I'd given up on it for a while, but uh, he inspired me and I started in again and uh, I'm grateful to him. So I've been really busy lately. There used to be a full-size 800-pound pool table here, and I moved that out. Underneath that green tablecloth is a brazing table that I MIG welded together. I'll get into that later. And all that furniture was in this back area, which is now becoming my studio. Currently working on it right now, moving this equipment in. I got a workbench, drill press, this desk is for working on antique pocket watches. There's my ultrasonic for cleaning antique clock mechanisms. Um, my workbench there. This is some of the gear that I have for filming. And um, continuing to, this area is continuing to uh, evolve. Now, I decided to make my backdrop the sky and I made them much bigger. I made it out of um, pink insulation foam. The white paint on this pink insulation foam is Glidden's Grip It. This is this is really good stuff. It actually you can use it as a glue and it, it won't mess up this foam. Um, you need to put that Grip It on to be able to paint it. This foam is a little tricky to, to, to cut carb it's very soft and so it can break and crumble on you as you'll see you need a really sharp knife and see that crumble right there um, it can cause issues or, or that you can't sand out so that's what the lighter tan color on on the figure there is is wood putty Put wood putty, fill in the little imperfections and sand. There's the finished guy right there. That's going to be my backdrop for my studio. Back to the kinetic art. Okay, so here we have some cutters. These cutters run about $30. These are the, the gray ones are the uh, preferable ones. The red handle ones are about $15. The yellow handle ones are about $9. Any of them will work. Uh, but you get a much better result with these large ones. Uh, they're more professional. They cut smoother. So what I did here is I take off the bulk of the metal. And I'm just giving it a little demonstration of if you let the tip of these cutters come together when you're cutting, no matter which cutter you have, even a pair of scissors and a piece of paper, you're gonna get this little bend buckle that you're not gonna be able to remove. So what you wanna do is use the sweet spot of the cutters, which is just a midsection. 
right there, I just pointed to it. That is, you'll get the smoothest cut and have to do the less, least sanding uh, and filing to get a smooth result. So I'm going to go with circles as a design. You can use any design. These circles are laid out from small to large and I'm drawing how I want to lay out the wires. When you're putting this together, you want to start on the small end and work to the large end. Now here's some things I, I, I pre-cut a bunch of them while I'm just watching TV or just passing time, listening to a podcast. I'll cut out a bunch of them and uh, I always have them ready to roll when I want to put them together. So I drill a single hole because I'll be using rivets to hold this whole thing together. And I'll drill each one the proper size for the rivet. So I'm using 1 8 inch rivets so I'll be drilling a 1 inch, one eighth inch hole and the backing washer that I'll be using for the rivet is also 1 8 inch. So this is the steel welding rod, wheel, uh, welding fill rod that I use. It's 1 16th inch in diameter in the link that I'm gonna put below, there's a guy that does videos and he uses a much softer wire that's easier to use, especially for beginners. So I urge you to look below, click below and see the link that I send. This guy just makes mobiles in his videos, that's it. So these are round nose pliers I have here and I'm gonna use these round nose pliers to make a uh, an opening at the end or closure at the end actually it's going to uh, be able to hold the rivet and hold the uh, plate in place so push the rivet through then through the loop there and the rivet on the back side of it it's a rivet gun rivet guns are very easy to use it is a, a very easy, safe, and inexpensive way to fasten things. If you've never used a rivet gun, um, you got to try it. It's, it, it's worth, worth the price, especially if you're working with like sheet steel and, and uh, you can even use it in woodworking uh, in certain circumstances. You'll need a decent pair of wire cutters. To, uh, to be able to cut the rod or the wire if you're using a, a lighter gauge wire. Once again, round, get a nice round shape on your end there. You see, I'll, I'll bend it around and then I'll bend it back to get that round shape in line with the wire. Back to the rivet gun. And it, and it expands and will cut that long part of the wire off the back. There's the piece that just fell out of the rivet gun. Now you have a very strong connection that could be outside for the longest time, not having to worry about it coming apart. Um, I'm finding the balance point here. piece of wire this this short does take a little bit of a uh, strength to bend around but it's not terribly too bad it's a lot of uh, tinkering or, or uh, testing to make sure you have the balance the right way you can still adjust to adjustments 
you can see how the piece kind of comes together there. Now we're gonna do the second piece. We'll connect to that. So this is gonna hold the blade. Oh, I'm, this is gonna go on the balance point and then the blade is gonna go on the other side. Finding the length of the wire here. Trying to get a nice gentle uh, bend in the wire. And once it's all together, I'll be I'll tweak it to just to make it balance and uh, move smoothly. Here's the other blade with it. Washer. A little better angle, so you can see uh, from this point on there's balancing. And this is why it's important to start the small end and work large, work to the larger end. If you do it backwards, uh, it will be just so frustrating. It will drive you nuts. It was just a little bit on the loose side, so give it a little squeeze nice and tight now. And that looks like it's riding pretty good, pretty smooth. Still doesn't have the arch in the wire yet that I like, but we will get to that. With, with bending the wire, I found that, that it's more of a massage. It's very gentle uh, massage. As you run your fingers over it, it also warms up the wire and makes it easier to bend. And it's just, you keep doing with the same process that you did the first piece. Do it with the second and the third. And there's many different types of molds that you can build. Oh, right here. You see how I'm twisting sideways to open that, what looks like a jump ring, really. In jewelry, that would be called a jump ring and opening those to the side and instead of trying to pry them open again, that's really the way to do it. That's how jewelers do it. So when you create a, a loop like that, like a, a ring, like a jump ring, and that's basically what that pair of pliers is designed for. If you open them to the side, like if you were to have a, a wrench in your hand and you took so one one way and one the other way, if you're opening it sideways, uh, it'll just go so much easier and faster and it won't distort the wire. You see that rivet gun has on the underside of it different nozzles for different size rivets. So it's a very versatile tool. Trying to find the balancing spot here. Right about there. And I made the loop on the bottom there, so I'm going to unhook it. Switch it around so that my connecting loop is on the top. It's just the way that it was bent around there. Close that loop back up. You see that little side twist? We're getting there.
These are great little pliers. They're not expensive. You can buy them in any craft store in the jewelry department. The rivet gun, any hardware store, really. Any hardware store should have them, should carry them. I had to use this rivet backwards. I actually ran out of rivets that came with, I mean, I ran out of the washers that came with the rivets, the backing washers. So I had to use a small stainless steel washer. And so I uh, did this one just a little bit different. See, it flares out the opposite end that the gun is on. And I had to put the washer on that side, but Easy, easy to work with. I highly recommend a, a rivet gun. They're fun to work with. If you're gonna do anything with a sheet metal or copper. Put the loop in. Put it with the sideways twist. Find the balance point. And actually had a, a hard time with, uh, you saw cut in the video there, I had a hard time with the balance point. So I just started over uh, with this particular one. Happens sometimes. Now tweaking it to give it the design I want with the, the arches in between the wires. Let's see how it balances. Ah, oh, that balances pretty well. Straighten it out. Now, there's a little trick that I also learned, and you can take, you can see the end isn't swinging quite freely enough, so you can bend the end of it down the, the where it connects in between where the balance points are and slightly out of frame there. But if you twist it down so it just hangs down a little bit, you see that the very end, the smallest one, has a little bit more free motion. So right where it, the second one connects to the first one. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. And like I say, I'm going to put a link below to a guy that just has his YouTube page dedicated to making kinetic mobiles. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.